So welcome everyone to Autodesk Virtual Academy, brought to you by your friends here at Kativ Technologies. Um, I'm Nigel Mbayek, one of the customer success managers here at Kativ. And today I am joined by two of my colleagues here. Uh, I'll introduce them now. I've got Phil Steiger on the line, who's our managed services specialist on the team. Phil, how's it going? Going great. How are you doing today, Nigel? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Really excited for the session today. Um, additionally, we have uh, Jason Cordemanche as well. Um, Jason's one of the AEs here on the team and uh, happens to be one of our vault gurus, I would say a wizard, um, more so than I would say. Jason, how's it going? He's, he's a guru. <laughs> <laughs> it's going well, thanks. Absolutely. I'm really excited to have you both here today. <clears throat> today, we're going to be going over some vault um, SQL maintenance plans. Um, first and foremost, there are a couple of really important portions of your business. Uh, one being, you know, the people at your business. I um, mean, another really key thing is the data that you all store, right? You want to make sure that's all secure and you're making sure you're taking care of all these repositories of your data. Um, sometimes this might be your vault. Sometimes this is um, other forms as well. So you just want to make sure those are as healthy as possible. We're going to go over some um, really key information just to make sure that all of your environments are, are sound and, uh, you know, you're doing all the right things to make sure your data is safe, secure, backed up, etc. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Phil and Jason for the rest of this webinar. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them in and I will go ahead and address those, you know, via the chat or I'll go ahead and do those during the dedicated Q&A session at the end. So with that, Phil, Jason, take it away. Thanks, Nigel. I appreciate it. And welcome, everybody. Uh, we at Kativ really think this is a critical piece of Vault is having your Vault SQL maintenance and having a plan around it. This will allow you to catch any you know, errors that might be happening in your SQL and hopefully you'll be able to negate any major problems. So I'm going to talk about two different ways of uh, managing that today. And so let's get started. First thing is, what does an SQL maintenance plan do? Well, Jason and I sort of talked about that, but it does provide database integrity. It does a lot of re-indexing of your data, which makes your searches faster, statistic update, and it cleans up your history, which is a critical, critical part. You don't want your history sitting out there. And you know, the more junk you have out there in your SQL, the harder it is for the application to do searches. It has to search through more stuff. And so I sort of did cover some of the benefits and some of the other benefits is that, you know, your database is gonna perform well. It's gonna keep the database and the transition log file size small. And it's also gonna be checking for database inconsistencies, which then in the log files is gonna show you that so that you're gonna be able to um, fix those before it gets to be a bigger issue. Um, some of the pre-steps that you should take before doing this, and I can't stress it enough, you need to use, do a full backup of your vault before you do any, make any changes into the SQL. And not a snapshot from a server or anything, it needs to be, you need to go into the ADMS console, select tools, backup, do a full backup. Second thing is it should be done during a maintenance window. I know most, a, lot of the, a lot of you guys have server teams, they have maintenance windows to do patching. This should be done during that time. It's really not suggested that you do this during any production hours where people are actually using the vault. The other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need rights to your admin rights to your SQL to perform these tasks. And one of the applications that's gonna make your life a lot easier to do this is downloading and installing Microsoft uh, SQL Server Management Studio. It's critical. I'm gonna show you both ways to do this through uh, scripts, but I'm also gonna show you how to do it through Microsoft uh, the Studio, which makes it a lot easier. And then when in doubt, set up a test server and practice. There's no harm in setting up a test server, practicing, you know, if it breaks, no big deal. Nobody, no harm, no foul. So how do you set up an SQL maintenance plan? Well, there's really two steps in setting up this maintenance plan. The first is configuring your SQL temp settings. And how it's supposed to look is, the rule is for every two CPU cores you have on your server, 
you have one log file. So if you have a four core server, you're going to have two log files. And then there's a temp log file, which is, if you can see over here on the right hand side, the temp log file is equal to both of the temp files. So if you have two temp files, it's going to add up to the uh, initial uh, file size is going to be exactly the amount of the two temp files. Step two is in SQL Express, you can run a few scripts to configure your SQL and then run a, a, a monthly, a, a weekly maintenance script on a, on a, with a bat file. And then in SQL standard or enterprise, you can create a SQL server maintenance plan and you can use that wizard. In SQL Express, they don't have that wizard available, but you can write a script and you can have it run. And I will show you during the live demo on how to run the script. And it will show you if there's any errors in your uh, database. So in the demo of the SQL Express, I'll be using um, the command prompt and I'm going to run one of the commands and then I'm going to show you how it changes in the studio, how it changes the temp log file. And then I'm going to do an actual change it in the studio manually that you can do without having to run the script. And then I'll also run the full script to after I, uh, to do, to check the database. And then I'll also walk through SQL server maintenance plan wizard and we'll go through the whole plan wizard and how to set that up. It's real easy, it's straightforward, and it's a great benefit. So let's uh, jump right into the uh, demo, live demo here. So you guys see on my screen, um, SQL Management Studio. I have two databases running. The database down here on the bottom one is SQL Express, and the one up here is full SQL. So once you open up uh, uh, SQL Management Studio and you log into your SQL, you can uh, click down on your databases and then your system databases is, this, is the temp file. And here I'll show you, you go to properties, you go to files. This is what a correct database temp file should look like. And I already set this up earlier. It's correct, it's set up for a four processor server. The temps you know, are set at 100, uh, 1024 and the uh, um, log files at 2048. It's a uh, 100 meg and unlimited uh, growth on both of these. And then this is by 10% and it's unlimited. So now let's go look at the uh, temp file that's not set up correctly. This is what it probably looks like right after you install SQL and you've put your vault on there. As you can see, the temp uh, size is wrong and so is the uh, growth and the log is also wrong. And we're missing my other temp file here, my secondary temp file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you now how I can change this with a script. So I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna open up I'm going to bring over here my uh, command prompt and then I'm going to take and copy over my script and then I'm going to run my script and my script is going to automatically go in there. If we go back here, go back to file, you can see that my script automatically forced the changes here. That's great, but there's also an easier way you don't need to be a coder and have to write script to do this. I can just go down here and I can hit add and I can go here, I go here and I can type in my uh, temp dev underscore two. And then I can change this to 124. And then I can go in here and I can change this to 100, hit OK. Now I've set my log. My temp log is also wrong. I can easily just go in here and change this now to 48. And I can set this to 
10% un oh, unlimited and hit OK. And now I hit that. It's going to execute. We'll go back in here. Go to properties. It'll rearrange it. Now that you can see that my temp files are all set up and ready to go with a script. Now, the one thing you can't do, like I said in the beginning, is with Express, as you look here, they have maintenance plan in full SQL. It's not available in um, SQL Express. So you can run a BAT file. And we created a BAT file. There's an SQL BAT file that you can run. And if you copy it in here and it's, you know, it's a simple little bat file and it runs and it creates a result. Now you can create a uh, task to have this run every Sunday and then you can go look at the log. So I hit this, it runs and then it brings me this log file here. It says, you know, vault database compatibility, recover mode, it's done everything it's supposed to do. And then it goes through and it checks for errors and everything in the system. And then at the very bottom update, there was no errors. Everything's good to go. I'm good. So you can run this every week on your SQL Express. Now, let's go over to uh, full SQL. The full SQL has uh, the ability to do a maintenance plan. So I just go right here and I create new maintenance plan. And I can just, and all you want to do is create a vault maintenance plan. Give that name, hit OK. And I don't know why it came up in go back and right mouse click on maintenance plan tab you want the wizard oh, oh I'm sorry. The mouse. I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh so yeah if you're gonna go in here and go uh going to select and you want to change this now and you're going to tell it you're going to want it to run weekly I want it to run on Sundays I want it to run let's say eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday usually no you don't have production you can do it at night just depending on uh, if you are 24 hour operation so I set that it's going to occur now every Sunday at 8 a.m and it's going to start on the 7th. So I hit OK. And then I hit Next. And now I'm going to tell it um, what I want. I want it to check for integrity. I want it to rebuild my indexes, update my uh, statistics, and I want to clean up the history. Then I'm going to hit Next. And you want to make sure this is in the correct order, just like this is right now. This is the order you'd like to see it in. You can change the order, but you want it to check the integrity first, then index, and then statistics, and then clean up the history. And then we hit next. And we want to select all databases. And hit OK. And you, it'll include the physical. Uh, Phil, go back to the all databases. It's all user databases. Oh, so all user databases. So that way it focuses on the vault databases and leaves the, uh, the other ones alone. Okay, and then you hit next, and then you hit all user databases and hit okay. I don't have to change anything in here other than that. And then you hit next 
and you want to next one, you do the same thing, all user databases. And you hit next. And in here, you want to get rid of backup history. And it runs for four weeks. That's what I a standard that we do. Hit next. It's going to save the report into this. You can always change your log file to wherever you'd like. You can always just click here and change it and then hit next. And then when you got here, you hit finish, it'll run. And then you hit close. And now you've created uh, your, um, your database your vault sql maintenance plan and it's always sometimes a good idea you can always manually run it you know when you're done creating it if you want to just test it and not wait till sunday morning you can always go over to the sql maintenance plan folder and expand it and then and you can always right mouse click on the at least for your sql standard and right mouse click on it and do a run now if you need to run it prior to the scheduled time. It's always an option. We'll go back here to our presentation. And we'll go to next. And if there's any Q&A. Yeah, feel free to put any questions in the in the chat. Uh, one question that came up earlier: um, this will definitely be recorded, and you know, if you have your IT person that's unable to make it today, um, you know, we'll be following up with a, a link to be able to see you later. Also, um, you know, all this information is also in the uh, Vault Help um, as well, um, which is a great reference. If you're going to, you know, there's a lot of settings that fill one over, so it's easier to forget one of them. So feel free to reference this or and or the help um, as well. And the biggest um, difference is just making sure, um, you know, what version of SQL you have, because, you know, if, like Phil mentioned, if you're on Express, you have to do it, set it up one way. If you're on standard um, SQL, you can set it up with a wizard, it just kind of depends. Um, but it's great to go ahead and do this because it's easy to forget because it's one, one of those things that doesn't automatically happen when you install Vault. Um, and again, you know, if, if you don't feel comfortable making these kinds of changes to your production box, this is a good thing to do during the migration or an upgrade because um, you'll already have a maintenance window. And that yep. way you're not making any changes and until you go and do uh, an upgrade. So based on what I'm looking at, guys, it doesn't look like we have any questions on YouTube. Um, was there anything you guys wanted to add before we let everybody go today? No, I'm good. I hope uh, this was helpful for everybody. Yeah, thanks for coming. And, you know, if you have any other questions, feel free to follow up, um, you know, especially when you go and set up for the first time, we're more than happy to help. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, like like it is down there, our, our email address for our support lifeline team and uh, the phone number to reach that team is there as well. So if you have any questions at any time, maybe you think of some later, definitely feel free to reach out to either of those two methods and uh, we'll make sure the right person gets to you on the phone or email. But it looks like, boom, last minute questions always happens. It's just a thank you from Bob Holland. Bob, thank you. Um, for joining us today, actually, it's uh, it's been a long time. I haven't talked to you in a, quite a while, so definitely hope you're doing well. And um, everyone, thanks for joining the first AVA of 2021. We will uh, talk soon, and uh, we'll see you here next week, uh, Thursday at same time, same place. Have a great weekend, or yeah, weekend, everyone. For those of you who have tomorrow off, and uh, Jason and Phil, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Nigel. I appreciate everything. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye.